Hey everybody, creators, content creators, content consumers, what's up? Welcome back to another podcast episode. I'm so excited to have you here today. So in today's episode, I wanted to go over a little bit about um, business operation in the digital space and kind of what that means if you are somebody that would like to launch your business in the digital space as of April 2022. So let's get right into it. I'm very excited. I have a bunch of notes here. Uh, The first thing that I'd like to talk to you guys today about is creator philosophy and kind of what that entails as being a content creator. So um, anybody can be a content creator, like I've mentioned before, countless numbers of times in various other podcasts. And I think that everybody inherently really is. If you have an Instagram account, you are a content creator, whether or not you know it. Um, and it is an opportunity for you to grow within a certain niche or a certain space and then to begin uh, providing services to people who uh, will eventually benefit largely and and form your community, and then you can begin monetizing. So um, that is kind of what I'd like to uh, really discuss in this episode, and these are the people that I cater to uh, in my uh, podcast audience. So let's discuss creator philosophy. Um... Again, uh, whether you know, you know it or not, you are a creator. You create everything every day. You create cleanliness in your room when you clean. You create um, new fashion pizzas when you put clothes together, right? And in the digital space, being a content creator uh, really means just having the innate need to help other people, right? Having the innate need to serve in some way. And so you serve all the time. You serve in your communities. You serve within your family. You serve at work. Um, we're always serving anyway. The space of digital content creation, the space of digital business, though, operates in a way in that you have the freedom to actually serve in any way that you want, right? And so a lot of service in the online space goes towards education and creating e-learning profiles and platforms and creating uh, hubs for people to come together to form a community of like minds who like to discuss things that they are passionate about um, and it could be any niche too, guys. Like, there's so many pockets of the internet um, in which there's a place for everybody, right? I remember when ASMR videos first came out, I was so shocked. I was like, there's an actual niche or market for this kind of content. Um, but it turns out, yes, there is. People enjoy hearing ASMR videos. It's very relaxing to some or calming to some, right? So that's just a, a prime example. So, um,. You know, when being a creator, back to creative philosophy, when being a creator, um, service is the driving point because it is all about finding um, a pain point that your audience has or, or something that you have as well, maybe a pain point that you have as well that you've had to overcome in your life, right? And so you can talk about this on the internet. You can go ahead and open a social media account and talk about how you solve this pain point for yourself, how you solve this problem for yourself. And you can give people value in that way. And so, um, you know, my main uh, philosophy as a content creator personally is to serve, right? So whether this is pro bono or not, the end goal is to give, right? Because that is actually the prime nature of our human existence in the first place. Like we yearn to be of value, we yearn to be of service, we just don't really know it. Um, And we think that the main value or like what's in it for us comes from when we take from other people or industries, and that's just simply not true. Um, In fact, you're the least fulfilled, scientifically and psychologically speaking, you're the least fulfilled when you're taking from somebody, and you're the most fulfilled when you're giving. So now let's move on to content philosophy, now that we've discussed creative philosophy. So when it comes to content philosophy, um, I personally have this philosophy of value over virality. So think about it, when it comes to going viral on any platform, whether it's Instagram or TikTok, you can go viral um, and maybe hit like 100k views on um, any piece of content that you put out, or maybe even a million or two million views. So that's what's known as short, short-term virality, right? And so what happens then is that, um, you know, your views may skyrocket for a day or maybe even a week. Um, But you really don't drive any leverage with virality because um, it dies down after a while, right? It's just like watching a graph, uh, watching a a line graph spike and then fall down once again, right? And so when you're talking about a line graph in regards to only one viral TikTok video, that um, range of 
visibility is limited because you're only getting one video out there that has really blown up, right? However, if you were to have many, many small types of maybe um, the 20K or so videos within the same within the same bubble of information, what happens is um, you begin to build uh, value uh, with each video. And so the more value you provide to people, the more they're gonna see you as a consistent speaker uh, in a certain field, right? An authority in your field. And so people are gonna follow you. And what, that, what that's gonna lead to is that's gonna lead to community, right? And what that's going to lead to is eventually, um, if you would like to do so, uh, you know, uh, the expansion of your business, uh, the scalability of your business, right? That really drives sales later on. Um, again, sales sales is not the goal here. The goal is to provide value, right? The goal is to serve, right? We are in the business of service. We are not in the business of business. That's what I always say. So, um, so back to the content philosophy virality example. If you have, let's say, like a series of maybe 50 videos that get 20K views on each video, right? Um you are going to get long-term, uh, you're going to build a community for the long-term, right? Rather than if you were to just put out one video and it goes viral once. That's not what we should be you know, looking for. That's not the goal here. So a lot of young content creators hop on TikTok and with the, with the few exceptionable ones like Hype House and what have you, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of young kids or a lot of young people or even, you know, young adults or people in business in the tech field they hop on TikTok thinking that, uh, okay, my startup is going to do well because, um, you know, I'm just going to make a bunch of viral videos. And while that's good, it's really good to, to incorporate virality within your content. It's not the goal. And I'm sure startup companies know this, right? If you're, if you're a startup company and if you're uh, taking a TikTok to explode your brand, you probably already know that virality is not the goal here, right? Because you've studied your competitors and you've done a lot of market research before launching, hopefully, right? So you already know, you know, the ins and outs of TikTok algorithm, what kind of hashtags to use, who your audience is, what their pain points are, um, you know, before you launch, right? That's the goal, right? But let's say you're an independent business owner or let's say you're an independent service provider and you hop on TikTok with absolutely no idea what you're doing because a lot of people do. I did in the beginning of my journey, right? Um, with zero market research done, zero competitor research done, um, you know, zero identification of potential audiences, pain points, zero whys, right? You're not going to have direction when it comes to your content. And the algorithm of TikTok changes consistently. So um, if you're not working it, if you're not training the algorithm, right, it's not going to do what you want it to do. And so a lot of people wonder why their content isn't taking off or what have you. It's not only that you probably have bad content strategy, but it's also that you probably have bad um bad production strategy right um and so you want to get your content uh strategy down right your creation strategy down and then you also want to get your production strategy down right you really want to get your um your your marketing and distribution strategy down as well so those are the two points of really attacking any social media platform i'm using tiktok as the basic example because it is the number one leading um application right now uh, in terms of social media but also in the tech world which is crazy I love it I'm, I'm all over it I think it's so cool how every single tech company is also on TikTok like that is so crazy to me um, so even applications like Duolingo which is a language learning app right which I use um, is is on TikTok and if you guys are on TikTok you probably know how they're killing it on there and they're really really funny and interactive with everybody on there so it's just it's just really cool to me so um so okay so we covered uh we covered what did we cover let me look at my notes here we covered creative philosophy we covered content philosophy let's discuss workflow philosophy because i'm somebody that loves to have systems i love to have systems in my day-to-day -day life um you know it could be as simple as keeping your phone in the other room when you sleep and then waking up and walking over to turn off the alarm that's a system and then that that kind of mindset trickles down into your everyday workflow in the career space as well right so if your life is to, this is what i always say if your life is together personally your life is going to be together professionally because truly there's no difference in my world at least between personal and professional life there's really no difference um you know the way you do one thing is the way you do anything really right 
So when it comes to your personal life, it's good to have systems, right? Um, find what is the best way for you to dress. Find your own personal style as a system. Find your own makeup and, you know, the way that you can optimize your makeup for your skin type, your skincare routine. Like, those are systems. Um, and But you stick to it, though, right? Like, for example, for me, I've been using the same concealer for, um, like, seven or ten years now, right? And I'll probably be using it till I'm 80, right? So, like, that's just an example of a system. Like, I found what's worked for me. It hasn't failed me yet. I'm going to keep using it. If they change the formula of the uh, consistency of the concealer, then I may have to switch over to a different product. And that's kind of how the algorithm works as well um, in the AI space um, and in general. Actually, the algorithm is becoming more AI. Um, is becoming more AI dominant, right? Um, it is AI, actually. It's driven by AI. It's driven by user face and... Um, and it's backed by a lot of data um, analysis as well, right? Um, so a lot of research is being done on the on the consumers of TikTok as well. Uh, so that's why, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's why you can train the algorithm to, to actually do exactly what it is that you want it to do by following similar accounts that are similar to your niche, um, you know, by really interacting with those accounts as well, by uh, seeing what is kind of missing in these various communities and providing value that could be different, right, uh, could be novel, right, so, um, so yeah, so that's just an example of, like, a system, actually, everything in life is a system, um, the algorithm is a system, the way you wake up and, and how often you brush your teeth and you shower, that's a system, right, your cleanliness in your day-to-day -day life will, will, and your attention to detail in your day-to-day -day life will go ahead and transfer over to your professional working life, um, and, and that's exactly why I say that it's really cool when you discover your passion for something, go for it, right? Especially now in the creator-led environment of, you know, the entirety of the digital space, we can go ahead and do anything we want to do. Uh, and we can, we can follow our passions and really turn it into something that serves the world, like the globe, because everybody's on the internet, right? So... You know, again with the with the ASMR thing, and then I remember in the beginning of quarantine, like um, there were just things that blew up, like different makeup channels and stuff just blew up because people had like all this time on their hands to go ahead and discover what they enjoyed, and that is the coolest thing because uh, actually this leads me to my next point um, about workflow philosophies that you should really only create when you feel like it, like when you feel inspired to create. But um, what that kind of what that kind of entails and what that kind of suggests is that you are passionate about what you do, right? It is very important for you to be passionate about what you do because if you are not, um, then you're not going to want to do it at all <laughs> and then it's not going to yield the results that you want. So a lot of people push themselves in spaces of discomfort anyway and they don't like that they're there and they still push themselves there when that's exactly the wrong direction that they should even be going towards, right? Um, and I see this all the time with people in their personal lives, their professional lives, like building startups in the tech world, like people stay in situations and even companies and roles that they have outgrown a long time ago. Um, and so they, they keep pushing themselves to deliver, but you're not going to, you know, deliver viable results if you're unmotivated and unhappy. And that's just the truth. Um. And so I think it really is at the end of the day discovering about discovering who you are and discovering what you like to do and, and really making that your whole world, you know. Like if you're if you have a wide variety of passions, because I have so many passions, right? Like I have a long list that don't even they don't even really combine. It's just that me being me makes all of them combine together, right? So that's again the foundations for a personal brand, right? So like some of my passions include like speaking, writing, um, talking, educating about different things. I enjoy educating about um, spirituality and, and mindfulness and self-mastery. I enjoy educating people about business and, and startups in the tech world are slowly evolving and no-code startups and all these kinds of things, right? Um, I enjoy business building as well. It's a hobby. I enjoy, um, you know, brainstorming, studying. Like, that's a hobby of mine as well, right? Um even like calligraphy is something that I really enjoy. So, so, and, and, but I also enjoy like singing, like that's a huge thing that I love, right? And I enjoy performance art and I enjoy being in front of a camera 
and I enjoy makeup and beauty and fashion, right? More so fashion, but you know, not not makeup as much, but fashion is something I'm huge at, at right? Um, so it's just about finding what you like and then and then really embodying all of those things and then expressing all of that outward into the world via social media, which by the way, supports all of these things. I don't know if people know this, but I have multiple accounts on various platforms and I do different things on each one of them. On one of them, I'm talking about business. On one of them, I'm talking about self-mastery and mindfulness. On another one, I'm talking about, um, you know, my personal life and, and vlogging and what have you. And so it's just really cool to, and, and I sing as well, right? So there's no end, guys, to the power of social media. But the thing is, though, that you have to know how to have, uh, like I said, um, the strategies for content creation and content production, right? Those two sides of the coin, right? Because... If you're really, really good and if you have many talents, that's great. But if you don't actually know how to produce or package what you have, you know, you're not going to be able to really get your stuff out there into the world. Um, and that's where that's where marketing comes in and that's where distribution comes in and learning the systems around marketing and distribution, right? Especially in the AI space, especially in the tech space, right? Because that is all social media is, you know. You can build a business now without even needing to learn code. That's exactly, that's exactly what no coding business is, right? You can build startup companies, tech companies, without needing to learn code at all, at all, right? So so things are progressing at a rapid rate, and it, it's like, you know, I want people to be aware of that, right? So cool, cool, really cool. So all right, so I'm really excited to, to bring this to you guys. So we discovered creative philosophy. We, we discussed uh, content philosophy. Uh, we discovered workflow philosophy. Now let's discover another topic of mine that I have listed here. Um, let's let's talk about what it actually means to have stickiness when it comes to your videos. Then this kind of goes with uh, content uh, creation strategy as well as content distribution strategy. This is an overarching kind of umbrella uh, consistent theme between those two uh, topics, subtopics. So let's talk about stickiness. So um, what the term stickiness actually means um, in the world of um, marketing and tech is that stickiness is anything about a website or an application or even a piece of content that encourages visitors to stay longer on that site or, or application or piece of content. So, um, you know, why I say this is a, this is a common denominator between content uh, creation and content distribution is that in order to have a sticky video or, or piece of content or photo or what have you, you need to draw viewers' attention. You need to really be able to have that shock factor, that shock value, um, and to really garner people's attention, right? So within the development of your actual piece of content, you should be having that in mind. That, okay, how am I going to get my audience's attention within maybe a three-second uh, span of uh, you know their attention, right? Um, so that's the first piece. Now the second piece for content distribution uh, and why stickiness is really important within the framework of content distribution is because when it comes to content distribution and stickiness associated with that, it really deals with the algorithm, right? You are really working with the algorithm here. You're really working actually against AI here. So instead of working against AI, let's work with AI by actually learning um, how the algorithms work on each different social media platform. Again, I focus on TikTok and talking about TikTok because viral video content um, is everything right now in the business and tech world, and, um, you know, it's, it's really good, <laughs> it's really good for businesses to have TikToks, like, I can't stress this enough, because the virality of short film video is, like, uh, insane, <laughs> um, and a lot of creators and startups and small businesses are making a lot of money from p partnerships, actually, um, within the creative space, so, so we discussed stickiness, and a lot of you may be asking me, Seema, like, how do I come up with good topics for my videos, or um, how do I know what to post, right? I have passions, but how do I actually create my content? That's a really good question. So when it comes to actually coming up with topics for your videos, um, the first thing that you want to do is, again, like I kind of mentioned before, you want to follow about 10 or so similar accounts to yours and your niche, and then you want to go ahead and look at the videos that really did well um, with those creators and then recreate those videos in your own way. So 
again, um, take inspiration from creators within your field of expertise. Go ahead and recreate those videos in a way that puts your spin on it, um, you know, with all of your personal, uh, you know, framework kind of embedded into that content piece, and then market it kind of in a similar type of way. Um, the second step to coming up with topics for your videos is to actually save videos that you that you see uh, on TikTok. So save videos that you want to recreate. Um, I don't know if you will know this, but you have a favorite feature on TikTok and you have a save button on, on these various videos on TikTok and you can really save any video you want and then you can go ahead and recreate that one later on. And the third step to coming up with, with great topics for your brand is to use the TikTok filters, like the search bar filters, to go ahead and find the most liked or viral videos within, let's say, like a recent time period or like maybe you want to see, uh, you want to filter out for like a, a certain number of views that a video got, right? So um, you can go ahead and toggle those settings as well using the filter option when you search anything on the TikTok app, whether you're searching a hashtag or a sound or a person's name or the name of a business or startup, right? Okay, so those are my three steps to coming up with topics for your videos. And to answer the second part of your posed question, um, how do I know, I have a passion, but how do I know, uh, you know, what to really create content around? I'm going to tell you right now that you need to have at least four or five content buckets or content pillars to go ahead and center your topic frameworks around, right? So, um, for example, if you were to start a, a TikTok account um, around business and teaching people how to create businesses, right? Um, you know, maybe one of your content buckets could be uh, content creator tips. And then your second content bucket could be um, maybe like monetization for creators on social media. And then maybe your third content bucket could be, um, let's say, like a lifestyle content that centers around uh, startup creation, right? Um, and kind of what that looks like, maybe the behind the scenes uh, of like the day to day life of a business owner, right? And then the fourth pillar or content bucket that you can create is maybe like trending or viral content. I would put that kind of at the end of your priority list, um, but, you know, keep it there nonetheless, right? Having trending content that you can go ahead and kind of create once those sounds pop off because the shelf life of a trend, especially a, a sound trend, a trending sound, is about mm, maybe honestly like a week. Um, I'm sure there's an official graph somewhere. Um, maybe if you go to, um, I'll give you a website in a second that you can go to, if you want, to, if you're really, uh, you know, trying to do this. Um, the the shelf life of a of a trending sound is, I'd say, about a week, a week and a half, right? So um, the website you want to go to is um, is the talkboard, okay, uh, dot com, and you can see like trending sounds, trending videos. Um, you know, all the things that are trending in the content creator sphere. So we discussed creative philosophy. We discussed content philosophy. We discussed workflow philosophy. We discussed stickiness. We discussed coming up with topics centered around your particular niche. We discussed turning your passion into content buckets to actually go ahead and create content to really draw in a community. Now let's talk about networking and the power of networking. So Again, like I mentioned, um, the actual goal of any business on the online in the online space is to form community. It's not really to make sales. Um, if you're somebody that is just looking simply to make sales in your business or brand, um, you're in, you're going in the wrong direction. Okay, and I mean that very very respectfully. Okay. So when it comes to building community in the online space, this is something that you can do cross platform. You can do this across LinkedIn, across YouTube, across Instagram, across even your podcast and across TikTok, right? And you can build a community of people that will never go away. Let's say um, social media shuts down, you'll still have your community. And the power of community building is huge. The, the power of networking is huge. You know, there's this quote that says, um, it, it's, not, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, you know, I like to take it a step further and, and say it's what you know and who you know, right? Because how will you know who to know unless you have a goal uh, or, or a sort of direction in mind of what you need to actually be knowing? You see what I'm saying? Like, how do you know what you 
what the direction you should be going towards is unless you have passion uh, within you and you want to connect with people that have the same passion as you, right? So you need to know yourself and you need to know other people as well. And the, the power of networking is huge in the digital space. Actually, networks become networks over time, right? And a network could be anything. Think of a network as being um, shareholders in within different companies like Apple or Microsoft, right? Um, there's a network of show, shareholders in any tech company. There's a network of investors in any tech company, myself included, <laughs> recently, right? So... It's really cool because networks can be any anybody and anything, and you can create a group or a network for anything on you know various network building sites and and applications like Geneva and like um and you know there are other ones as well Slack obviously Discord obviously right um but you know those are those are basics as well so those are just the basic foundational tools for uh for any brand right so. Um, you know, also another thing I'd like to really, uh, you know, touch on kind of briefly actually is like not only the power of networking, but the power of partnerships, right? Because people underestimate how important having a partner is in the, in the world of business. You know, they enter into this world and they think, oh, okay, like, let me learn everything that I can. And let me just go ahead and execute myself. And that's dangerous because you isolate yourself from people that actually could potentially really, really blow up your idea and really, really help you, right? And really take it to another level. And um, and and so you don't actually get the help that you need. And so, you know, there's there's less hands involved in in the work in the workload. Right. And so now you're left kind of having to deal with all this work and, and back and stuff and front and stuff, <laughs> which is unrealistic and will lead to burnout. And then how will you scale? Scalability happens. Sorry. Um, in the back end processes, actually. And then it moves slowly to the front end processes. Like I said, if your systems are not clutch from the very beginning, from the get go, if your personal systems are not kind of like uh, you know up to date and being refreshed and kind of being renewed all the time and optimized all the time how will your front front end systems work as well right how will your production be scalable how will your delivery be impactful to people it won't right um you're going to be burnt out as a as a person and then as a creator and then as a business owner right so it's really important that you know, you allow people to help you, you make connections with people, you network with people um, that can actually really collaborate with you. And with two brains, with three brains, many, many beautiful businesses and, and things are born, right? Um, the power of community is one that should never be underestimated. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if there's any other topic you would like to hear from me about community building in the online space, about the creator economy and the creator-driven economy as the tech world continues to evolve. Uh, Let me know if there's anything you'd like me to discuss surrounding startups in the digital world and using social media to actually monetize as a creator or a brand. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you in my next podcast.